What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean. And on my review of the Asus Zephyrus M15, I had a whole bunch of comments of people asking me about different settings and how I should set it up and all this stuff. So today I wanna to do a video where I'm gonna do a full run through of how I have it set up and how I'm running it to get the best balance of performance, thermals and noise and everything like that. Inside of the Asus Armory Crate app, I am running it on manual mode and I have custom fan curves set. I'll show them on screen here so you can see what they are, but you can kind of play around with them however you like to, um, you know, get the level of noise and thermals that you want for your machine. I've noticed that typically playing with these settings, if I just have my laptop sitting out on the desk, it's gonna run at about 80 degrees. If I put on V-Sync uh, in the game, you know, it might run closer to 75 if I limit the frame rate a little bit. If I run it on a cooling pad, I get typically if I run it unlocked about 75 degrees. And then if I turn on V-Sync, um, you know, a 60 frame cap or whatever, and lower the GPU usage just a little bit, it actually drops close to 70 and sometimes down into the 60s during gameplay. But by doing all this, I'm able to keep the gaming temperatures well below the 90s, in some cases even in the 70s or 60s on the cooling pad, and at much, much, much lower uh, fan noises. So there's actually a decibel thing inside the Armory Crate app and I don't have a, a dedicated decibel meter or anything like that, but if I use that as the metric, that means that this is staying under 45 decibels during full load gaming with the unlocked frame rate. So that's a huge improvement compared to running it on turbo because it gets extremely loud in that case. Now, if you want the absolute highest performance, your best bet is probably just to put it in turbo mode and run everything at the highest power limits. Um, that's going to obviously be the loudest and the hottest also. So what I like to do is to kind of dial things back a little bit so that I can play without headphones and without the fans noise being overbearing, but with still getting a good amount of performance in all the games that I play. I will warn you ahead of time that we are going to be turning some things down. So in order to, you know, get this performance at the lower noise and thermals and everything, we are going to sacrifice some performance. So keep that in mind going in. All right, now right off the bat, we want to go into the BIOS and undervolt the CPU. This is a pretty cool option that Asus offers on these 10th gen laptops because undervolting is locked down on, you know, CPUs from a lot of other makers. So what you want to do is shut down the computer, don't hit restart, hit shut down from Windows, and let it do its thing and shut down, wait for a second until the LED indicator lights are off and it's totally silent. Then hold the F2 button and press the power button and keep holding F2 until you boot into the BIOS. Once you're in there, at the bottom right corner go into the advanced mode and then in the settings there's a core um, voltage configuration option and you can enable a core voltage offset and in mine i'm running it at minus 75 millivolts you can do up to 80 in there you know um, not every system is going to be the same i got a couple of blue screens at 80 but it seems to be running good at 75 for me next uh, another thing we're going to do inside windows is install quick cpu and inside the quick cpu app uh, once you get that installed, you want to set it to run when Windows boots up and I set mine to run minimized and then I'm going to set power limits. So for the two power limits, I'm going to put the first one at 39 watts and then the second one at 29 watts. And um, you know, you could do 40 or 30, you could use higher ones, uh, you could do like, you know, 55 and 40. Really just the less you can get away with in here in your games is the cooler and quieter the system's gonna run. So it's really up to you and you can change it at any time. Okay, next, still inside of Quick CPU, we're gonna go into the advanced CPU options again and inside Speed Shift, you wanna click this little box that says monitor and enforce my speed shift settings. And then for me, I set the boost to be at about 3.6 or 3.8 gigahertz depending on the game and uh, hit OK, apply, whatever. And so that's gonna keep the CPU running at, you know, 29 to 39 volts, and then boosting up to about 3.6 gigahertz. And this is enough to run most AAA stuff at 60 frames per second, most eSports stuff at high refresh rates, and it's gonna keep the um, temperatures and fan noise considerably lower than it does at the default settings. 
So with those things in place, that kind of keeps the CPU temperature under control. So next we just have to worry about the GPU temperature. This laptop has something called Max-Q Dynamic Boost. And what that does is basically when it's in a GPU heavy load, it can move some of the power from the CPU to the GPU, but it also is gonna you know, make the GPU run hotter. This is a Max-Q GPU, but with that Dynamic Boost, it can push it up to 105 watts. And that is, you know, you're going to need to run the fans louder and it's going to get hotter. So if you go into the NVIDIA control panel, I've actually disabled the Max-Q Dynamic Boost. And honestly, you don't lose a ton of performance from this. Uh, if you've watched Jared's Tech, shout out to Jared's Tech on YouTube. He did a video where he went in and compared the same GPU with and without Dynamic Boost on, and honestly, I didn't think it was that big of a difference. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disable it here um, in order to keep the thermals and noise down. And finally, we're gonna undervolt the GPU. Now, by default, these Max-Q cards, I think only are rated to boost to like 1450 megahertz, but they go well beyond that on the turbo profiles and things like that, but they also get hot. So what I'm gonna do, is bring up my custom curve in Afterburner. I'm just gonna come in a couple of dots from the left, and then I'm gonna bring it up to right above 1500 megahertz and hit the okay thing. And so this is basically gonna make our graph a straight line, and it's gonna peak at around 1500 megahertz, but really low on the voltage curve. So it's not gonna use hardly any power, and that's gonna keep the temperatures way down. And even though you're losing 100 or two megahertz, there's honestly not a huge performance difference. I ran the 3 Mark Firestrike benchmark, and with everything running all out on turbo mode, it got right over 17,000. And then with this undervolt and the CPU settings that I'm running, I ran it again and it got over 16,000. So you're only losing like 1,000 out of 17,000, and I think that's about 6%. So you're giving up about six or 7% of the 3D performance, if you use that as the metric at least and you're cutting temperatures by 15 or so degrees, and you're able to run at much lower fan speeds, and I just find it to be a much more enjoyable experience. But I hope this was helpful if you were looking to, you know, lower your temperatures or just interested to see how I have my system set up. Bob of all trades also did a good video on the Zephyrus M15. He said that he liked to use it on the turbo mode and then use headphones, which that's totally a good option too. That's gonna get you the best performance. And using headphones on this is really nice um, with that DAC, but I just prefer to not use headphones myself. So I will sacrifice a little bit of performance to make it run cool and quiet. And if you want to, I hope this was helpful. Like the video if you liked it, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next video.